This is the If More Let's Divide podcast. Yo guys, what it happened? Welcome to the F More Let's Divide podcast. Another week, another episode. Yes, sir. That's how we've been doing, and that's what we do. We come through. Chai Fred, what do you go on? A base, bro. Yeah, Chai. Why are you check your pinky way, <laughs> Charlie? Uh, so uh, you do. I did watch myself for the video inside. So the advertised for the shorties. So. Hey, but why did you make the ring yourself? I had it made. Is it is it, is it gold? Is it like eighteen character? 14. 14. Oh, yeah. oh, dope, dope, dope. Yeah, me, the jewelry be something that I don't really mess with, even though I, I have a few. Yeah, as a gun man, I'm apparently not supposed to wear gold a lot. Why? My dad told me we don't wear gold. But I have in Zima, I have a can in me as well. So I, I Yeah, because you've been, at least there is something gold on you every single time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Generally, why? as gun we wear like, you know, the cowries and... Uh, but, but why do you wear it? Does it show wealth or do you like the, the feeling gold. on your skin? I just or? like the color. The color? Yeah. So why don't you wear bronze or... I have those too. You have those too? Yeah, I have those too. So Sometimes those... I, I they mix them up. Mm, okay, okay. But today, I'd be kind of matching. So much on a typical day, which what would you go for? A gold ring, a gold bracelet or a gold necklace? I have a gold necklace that I constantly wear. Mm, yeah. Mm. yeah. So it's always dope. on my neck. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Dope, dope. Charlie, um, Fred, we wanted her on episode one, mm-hmm. but she was constantly bashing us. Really? Because of our videos. Okay. You know, and it's and it's those feedback that I really need in, in my life because she was blunt. Charlie, your video sucks. That was the first thing. That which one? Like the first season, like our videos that we oh, were posting. Oh, right, 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 yeah. right. Yeah, she was like, your video sucks, your video sucks. And I think she told me that if you, until you get to your video on point, I'm not c- coming. Ah. Yeah, yeah. I like, I like a decisive So moment. I was receiving your bashing for, for you. Nice <laughs> Without one. you knowing. Nice, nice Char- to meet you. Really nice to meet you too. <laughs> Guys, ladies and gentlemen, we have an amazing woman in the house Someone I can proudly say is a friend. Someone who is, who is constantly putting me in check. Writer, feminist, and everything in between. Ladies and gentlemen, help me welcome Nana Dakwa Sechiawa. Yes, sir. Wait, did I get the intro right? Yeah, you did. Yeah. You did. Because I didn't. Ch- I know you're a writer. I know you're a feminist. Yes. And and you say everything in between. Yeah, everything That's in between. So that covers a point for conversation. You know, we'll Nada, what's out. up? Hey, I'm good. It's really good to be here. First thing, why were you bashing me? I know the video wasn't on point for season one visuals. Because I really, really love this podcast. I think you guys have created an amazing platform. Hey, yeah. one point for us, yeah. one point for us. But then usually, how I would know there was a new episode would be on Instagram. Yeah. And you know, Instagram is a very visual platform. Yeah, yeah. And me, I'm on Instagram for the pretty pictures, yeah, yeah. the nice videos. And then, like, I'll see your video, and I would like what people are saying, but I would be distracted by maybe the angle at which the camera is looking at you, Fred. And I'm mm. like, this is taken away from yeah. my yeah. visual pleasure. Mm. It was doing what I needed to do. It let me know there's a new episode. I will go then to Spotify, which is my platform of choice, and listen. But I was like, no, Mutombo, you need to do better. So I am glad you listened. And I love this new studio setup. Hey, it's fantastic. Give it awesome. up, give it up, give it up. Awesome. The now, Nana Anof backdrop. You know I'm a huge, Nana you know yeah, I'm a huge know. Nana Anof fan. I know, I know, so, Charlie, it, it's just killed me. I know. Thank you, yeah. for, thank you for the one-up. You is see? Nana Anof different from Panji? No, yeah. Nana Anof is Panji's... Brother. Yeah, your younger bro. Yeah. Creative family. Um, Fred, did you hear her? Mm-hmm. For my visual pleasure. <laughs> Your face changed because Fred picked that book and was like, ah, why do you have pleasure? You remember when you were signing the book? Yes. You, yes, you yes. Added, and I'm like, oh, you like using that word a whole lot. Uh-huh. And you just used it. Yes. What was my, what was my autograph? To you? I know I deliberately made it a bit naughty. Yeah. Because I also like to get people in trouble. Well, <laughs> you did get him in trouble. <laughs> yeah, I, that was the first thing I picked up on. Oh, it was... The most notable thing there to me. Yeah, mm. yeah. But I'm always reading yeah. into things, so maybe... Another thing it. that you have constantly... 
um, bashed me for was setting reminders. Hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. You know, because I always, yes. anytime you like, you're always setting reminders. And you're like, ah, why don't you set, oh, Nana Mirifi, why don't you set reminders? Why don't you set reminders? How helpful is technology to you? That is such a great question. I don't think I will be where I am without technology, even as a writer. Because I started writing because I started blogging, right? Mm. And obviously, blogging is an online platform. And I think it's because I've been blogging for, gosh, since 2009 Mm. that I became the writer that I am today. Mm. And yes, technology is super important to me in everything I do. Like professionally, I've been working virtually since 2014 working for wow. global organizations without the help of technology. That means way before be the this. pandemic. Way, mm. way, way before oh. the pandemic. So you were used to. Before. When people were stressed <laughs> about Zoom, like that was my normal life. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Oh, dope, dope. Um, are, you, are you saying that you don't have any formal training in writing? As in, I, I do in the okay. sense that I've been to writing workshops, right? Okay. But I don't have a master's in fine arts, which is, I guess, the kind of formal training that people may go for, a creative master's. Or like a journalism background. I don't a... have a journalism background, although I am now the co-founder of an institute for journalism and social change. Wow. Yes. Wow. So your writing came out of passion? My for... writing came out of my activism, really, you okay. know? Um, yeah, my writing came out of my activism. If I wasn't a feminist activist, I wouldn't be writing about sex and sexuality. Mm. I think it's a very political subject. Okay. You know? Yeah. You, you, you mentioned like your, your blog, which I used to go to like back in the day. Why when have you like, stopped going to the blog? Uh, for some funny reason, I thought you had stopped blogging. Never. Yeah. Well, I mean, to be, in all fairness, I don't blog a lot now, yeah. but I think the blog moved beyond me a long time ago, which for me is like a real measure of success when things move beyond you. Yeah. You know, and there are a whole lot of contributions on the blog all of the time. Yeah. Yeah. Adventures from a one, two awards, a blog camp, um, blogging Ghana awards, 20, 2013 and 2014. I can't remember the year, yeah, but think, yeah, there were subsequent years. Yeah, like, and the first year, we won Best Blog and Best Activist yeah, Blog. Yeah. And I, I remember that meant a lot to me, especially the fact that we won Best Activist Blog mm, because mm. I was like, oh, wow. So people recognize that this is not just to like yeah. turn people on. Yeah, yeah. You know, there's a purpose to what we're doing. Mm. So, so me, it came to me as a shock that your blog won the Best Blog because of what you wrote, wrote about, mm. taking where we are from, you know, sex is a taboo in quotes. Like we don't, we don't talk about sex. My parents, my mom never spoke to me about sex. Like I hardly, and even when I'm talking about sex with my friends, they don't come out, mm. you know, to talk about it. So your blog winning that award really came to me as a surprise. Was it the same for you? It meant a lot to me. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, I feel like that award helped my parents actually appreciate what I was doing. Mm. Because when I started blogging about sex, they were like, why do you have to put your business out there? (laughs) And then I remember that... Um, at least one of the awards came with 500 Ghana CDs, which at the time was like yeah, a yeah, amount yeah, of money. Yeah, 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 you yeah. Know? And my parents were yeah. like, oh, you got some money? Are you going to take us out to dinner? <laughs> and I feel like after that, they started like, you yeah. know, like they stopped questioning why I was doing yeah. this. Parents because are usually them, like that. Aren't they? I know, right? They want some sort of validation and to see like a reward and then yeah. be like, oh, okay. Yeah. Mm. Um, your dad or your mom who was like supportive or who was less like critical, like, you know, or less bashful, like who, why are you doing this? Like you need to stop. It's so interesting because they reacted very differently. Mm. So I remember when I had about three or four blog posts up, my mom asked to read the blog and I let her read it. And she was like, Interpol is going to come and catch you. (laughs) (laughs) About why? How? (laughs) I don't know. Because like, of sex? That was just like her reaction. Yeah. And my dad's reaction was always, I don't want to know about your sex life. I don't want to know about your <laughs> sex life. So he never wanted to listen to any yeah. interviews I did or read anything. But he was super supportive of my book. He knew I'd been working on a book for a long time. And he was always like, so when are you finishing this book? And then I'll go on a residency and I'll come back. And he's like, have you finished your book? Why is it taking you so long to finish your book? Like, yeah, he was always on my case. Is he an academic? He's not an academic. but Do he, you miss him? 
I miss him a lot. Yes, yes. My dad is no more. Um, for those who might not know, he mm. actually died due to COVID. Um, mm. And I like to mention it because I feel like the impacts of COVID, yeah. like we're very, very real. And sometimes people don't feel the way real. Yeah. Mm. So I miss him a lot. I'm gutted he didn't get to see some of the things mm. I have now achieved after he passed. Especially those things that he was on my case for. One was the book. One was finishing my house. He was always on my case about mm. these two things. And, you know, sadly, they all got finished, like, literally a few months after he passed. For all you know, he is behind, you know, the screen, pinching you. Do this. <laughs> finish the house. Finish the house. So, yeah, maybe he's, like, watching over you. Thank Sorry you. About yeah. you Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thank yeah. You. Um, Fred, you good? Yeah, I mean, I was following the conversation, but she needs to get to the palm point. Let's... Thank, thank you, you, thank yeah. you, thank you. I'm like trying to figure out the best position to, like, no, you know, you talk, I have to talk into the you. mic and grab my yeah, palm wine. I have to. You any any time you want to grab the palm wine, let me know, and, and I'll and I'll and I'll give, give it to you. I like it when men are in service to me, so thank you. I will add. <laughs> <laughs> so um, there's a couple of things that has that are running through my mind from your blogging. You said it started because of your activism, right? Mm. Like, how did your mom... Indirectly. Okay. Yeah. How did your mom even get to know that you were blogging? That's a good question, eh? I think I talked to my mom a lot. And also, I've been a fairly public person for a long time, so done a lot of, like, media interviews. Mm -hmm. And my mom is one of those moms. She will listen to every radio interview. She will like read articles i won't be surprised if my mom googles me to be <laughs> honest like she's just one of those moms she's like constantly on the oh. internet you know That's is, is it um is, is it a big age gap between? oh it's a yeah it is my mom is 75 wow and i'm 45 so okay. that's, a, that's how many years is that 30 yes. 30, 30 years 30, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah dope dope um i was gonna ask this question is it because like are you are you able to talk about sex freely because m most part of your m most part of your childhood w wasn't here no the most, you, you, my childhood here. was all here wow so i lived in ghana until i was 19 years old oh crazy yes mm. right here I, I mean i grew up partly in north kaneshi yeah 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 yeah, yeah you said yeah so how does sex come easy? Just listening like, to a lot like, of like, Shabarans. Like you really talk about... <laughs> <and Patra. laughs> no, no, no. But Nana, you, you talk about sex so easily. How have you been able to do this? And I, this is what I mean by it's my activism, right? It's because I'm a feminist. So when I was 19, I went abroad and I studied communications and cultural studies. I actually really only wanted to study communications. Mm -hmm. But the university I went to had it as a joint degree. Yeah. And a component of cultural studies was mm -hmm. feminist theory. Mm -hmm. So then I got introduced to the likes of Alice Walker, Bell Hooks, mm. you know. Yeah. And like I was reading what they were saying and it was, you know, when it's like, oh, things are dropping into place. It's making right. sense. Mm. It's like things you had questioned, but you didn't really have language for. So those um, feminists, and many of them at the time were African-American feminists, those feminists really sort of just influenced me because I'm like, oh, yeah, you make so much sense. So I just started to read a lot more. And then I was like, okay, where are the Ghanaian feminists? And that's how I started reading, like, fiction, Amate Edu, you know, because I feel like she was the sort of first Ghanaian feminist I identified. Oh, wow. But as I got deeper into feminism, I think I just became more confident. And then I started to think about my own sexual experiences in Ghana. And I was like, wow, we're very hypocritical, you know, because I was thinking back to me as... Um, a student in school, mm -hmm. and my earliest sexual experiences were with other girls. Wow. Yeah. But that, was, but that was like, I was in a single girl's school. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, that yeah. was like yes. normal. Yes. It, didn't, it wasn't be... anything like special, right? And I was like, wait, so there's, how If come? there's a name for it, then, you know. And my school, we used to call it dear. We'll say your dear. This person's your dear. She's your dear, you know. So I was like, wait, but if we all did this and we didn't really sort of think about it and question it, now, why is this whole, why do we have this whole halabaloo about somebody's lesbian? Because what does this mean? Did it mean we were all lesbian in school? Does it mean I'm bisexual? So that made me start to question my sexuality because I was now reflecting on my real... Was it everyone, though? I mean, of course, I can't say it was everyone, but, like, at least there were three, four girls in school I hooked up with. 
mm. at the very in, least. In boarding school, right? In boarding school. Yeah. And it was very normal. Like, yeah, yeah. we would tie a cloth around the bunk bed, and there was always somebody who had a cloth tied around the bunk bed, and everybody knew what was happening, really? you know, underneath the cloth. Yes. Uh, what was... Can you say the name of the school? Yeah, St. Mary's Secondary School. Oh, I like Mary's chicks. I'm yes, St. Like <laughs> Mary's. I, I, I crack out St. Mary's. Yeah. Charles, yeah. a Casma, a Casma. <laughs> wow. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. So for me, I was just like, wait, so if so many of us had consensual sexual experiences yeah, 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 with yeah. one another, why are we now acting like it's somehow a crime to be a lesbian yeah. or to be bisexual? Yeah. So... You know? I, I think part of the response that you may be experiencing, this is just from observation. There's no hard you know, research or science behind what I'm saying. But in my experience, because I interact with women quite a bit, I think they like to see it as a phase mm. they went through. And it was a fad, something that, like, you know, mama and dada, when you're growing mm, up, mm. you do things in the neighborhood and you get to a point where you conveniently skate past it and you fit yourself back into mm -hmm, society the way mm -hmm, that you're, mm -hmm. quote unquote, supposed to. And therefore, they try not to dwell on what was happening on campus and to say that's their identity. Because yes. maybe for all intents and purposes, society yes. not accepting it makes them feel that way. Mm. No, they I actually agree 100% with you. I remember there was a time one of my older male relatives came to visit me in London and um, he was a diplomat, so he got picked up um, by a diplomatic car and I was like mm -hmm. sitting along for the ride and they were talking in the car. And he was like, yeah, the problem with the Western world is that you know they want to take this whole thing into adulthood. It's just something you do when you're in school and then it's over and done with. And I was just like, wait, so you also did some in school? That was like my thinking, right? <laughs> because mm. of that comment he passed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it was, I think when you're young and exploring, things do happen to enough of us like honestly one of the most vivid and I, I won't say names obviously but one of the vivid memories i have of boarding school was one of our peers being found in his bunk bed with a senior like you know that's the highest uh whatever class that you can be in uh behind him he had you know come on his back <laughs> And, 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 and it's that splattered. Yeah, and the dude was like, <laughs> oh, I don't know what happened. I was asleep. I'm like, bro, you can take penetration, boom, pam, boom, pam. And a guy would come on your back and you were asleep through all of that. That's not possible. But the stigmatization mm. is yeah. what probably was leading him to like shy away from it. For, for, for me, in secondary school, uh, there, there, were, there were talk here and there about guys but I never, ever saw, never, ever, ever yeah. really heard because people knew how I was in school. Like, Were you like homophobic I, in school? I can't remember, but I, um, I really didn't care about sex back right. then. Like, like, I had sex years after school. I like the way secondary you said school. back then. Yeah. So things have changed now. Like, as in... You care about sex now. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean... You know, no, let, let me finish. Mm hmm so no one spoke to me about sex back then in like mm. these guys because like they, they either I will bash you like go away like I don't want to hear this but but they were they were talk that it, it was really going on in I, boys I, I, school I, a bit yeah. more undercover yeah I'm sure yeah you know the world looks more favorably on lesbianism mm -hmm, than it does mm -hmm. on Why homosexuality though? I think it's because it feeds into male fantasy a lot of men mm -hmm. have fantasies about women sleeping with women. And, you know, so, and somehow they think, oh, there's a possibility that I might get invited into the... I was going to say, it's purely selfish <laughs> about men being into lesbianism because it's never about the two women having pleasure. It's more about how do I get in and take advantage of the situation where I have two women at my disposal, at least from the men that I've spoken to. That but, but Fred, I have, have you been in a threesome before? I've been invited a few times. I turned it down. Why? I just felt like my attention span is not good enough for two women at the same time. I've never been that great but, at... But you're assuming they needed you to give them a lot of attention. That's what I figured. The one work, <laughs> <laughs> The one work, you know, but... 
Two, I was like, bro, th- this is quite a challenge. I don't know if I'm up, I'm up for it. Next yeah, time, say yes and see. But what you, happens. Tombu, you say you do before. Never. I have never been in a threesome. Mm. Like, like would, people would consciously. Would you like to take part in a threesome? Now, no. Why now, no? Because, like, I should have done those things in my prime when I had strength hey. to, to face three, ah, but you guys, three girls at all. No, once. have you seen men? Why do you think sex is about strength? It, 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 it is. No, it's hey. not. No, no, no. Let me tell you something. Let's, let's the men talk. Sh- sex is also about strength. Trust me. It's not also, bro. It be strength. It be strength. No. Yeah. This is where you guys are going okay. wrong. Because you're assuming sex has to happen and revolve around your penis. No, that isn't what, what, what I'm saying. I'm saying you need strength. Energy. Energy. To do what exactly? No, tell me. One to thrust, do what exactly? One thrust is like because it's you're equivalent as human, to... you have to do a lot of thrusting. Why do you what? have to do a okay. lot of thrusting? So, Nana, what I'll tell you, Charlie. I think from <laughs> the 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 typical male perspective is that we we are socialized, or there's an innate desire to please your woman. That's how we feel. And what you guys have to re-socialize yourself and realize is that thrusting doesn't please. No, it's not about that. He's talking about thrusting. I'm talking about when you go into any sexual situation. Thrusting is important, please. Thrusting. <laughs> that, 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 is, that is the final. Yeah. That be the final show. That be the last. It's more killer. important to but, men than it is to women. Trust me. Really. Really. Trust me. There's a lot of. Hey. Then there this. may be the women that the we've been with. They are kind of demanding. The majority of women do not orgasm from penetrators. I've heard that. It's I've actually that. a well-documented it, yeah. fact. So overly focusing mm. on your energy and your power and your thrusting ability, you know? There's so okay. many other things so, you could do. Uh, Mutombo is focusing on the thrusting, but I'm focused... But, but, you, but you also like thrusting. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I trust in you. No, 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 no. <laughs> that you believe in thrusting. The thrusting? Okay, so if, uh, <laughs> if I'm speaking for myself personally, I've always prioritized... No, no, seriously. Okay, it's not because Nana, Nana is here. So no, no, no. no. I, this be real shit. For me, uh-huh. genuinely, you can ask any uh-huh. woman that I've dealt with intimately. Uh, no, be some quick thing, but like a woman that I've dealt with, I achieve higher pleasure from pleasing a woman. Hmm. If she's turned on, then yeah, the thrusting will come eventually, but I like that route where if the woman they enjoy itself. That'd be when my mind, they come out, say, okay, now let me go home. But generally, I know a bunch of my friends who also don't even like kissing. Like Charlie, Jim or Pluto, and you know, let's get down to business. But like, but like, but like me, generally, I don't like kissing. Yeah. I also don't like kissing very much. I, yeah, I don't you're, like you're, kissing. You're, you're a germaphobe. No, I'm not a germaphobe. It just feels like too intimate. Like, yeah. That is a very intimate you thing. Know, but I don't yeah. mind other things that I feel a real gem. So you, you, would you're one of those people. Away. You guys think uh, penetration is less intimate than kissing? Yes. I, hey, For me, yes. No, penetration is <laughs> intimate. It's a real deal. Yeah. 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 I, I, but I, why I, don't I, you like kissing? I have. I've never liked kissing. Like really? I'm so sensitive. You know not do. I'm so insecure. That's the word. Mm. If it comes to my mouth, mm. I'm not saying my mouth stinks. Like um, if, if it comes to hygiene, you know. You take but care of yourself, yeah. What will she think? Am I? Is there something? Is there some residue somewhere? Yeah, okay. You know, I think about a million things. But a lot of these so, things are shaped by your childhood experiences. But childhood too, I, I, I didn't like. Me, uh, no, but it be girls where they make us start feel like kissing. You want more? No, I want you to put it down for me. Thank you. Baby. Kissing is a thing because. Unfortunately, or fortunately for me, when I was younger, girls used to tell me I was a good kisser. Mm-hmm. So you always go for the thing that you are being praised mm-hmm. for. Kissing, kissing yeah. is my child. Well, why is the conversation? Ten, now I be ten, with ten. The, So now they come south. Out. <laughs> no, it's gone exactly where the pleasure <laughs> is. <laughs> Whoa. So, so we're 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 going to get into Nana's um, life, life, and, book, and, work. Yeah. Why did you write this book? I wrote this book because after years of documenting and sharing stories about the experiences of African women's sexualities, you know, I felt like, especially in in Western media, whenever we were portrayed, we were portrayed in a very limited way. You know, so if you think of a Guardian like story, it will be on FGM or you know another major major platform will be about specifically African women. Yeah, I feel like whenever African women were portrayed. You know, especially in Western media, 
when it came to like our reproductive health, it was just always very limited. We were either constantly pregnant, we were miserable, mm. you know, um, we didn't have access to sanitary towels. Mm. And I was just like, mm. but we have so much more going on for us when it comes to the whole area of sex, sexualities and reproductive health. And I thought, I want to write a book. And my initial goal was to interview a woman from each country on the African continent, you know, and show people that our experiences are really, really varied. And there's lots of fun, freaky things that happen in our bedrooms as well. No, We're not dope. just miserable. Dope. This book, The Sex Lives of African Women, is made up of stories, individual stories of different people from all backgrounds. And, and all that. How many years did it take you to put together this 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 book? I, I know you might have set, set it set it somewhere. Five. But I really want to know. Five? Yeah, she yeah, said. Yeah, it took five yeah. years. Yeah. Five years. Yeah. And I have to say it's not like five full time years, right? Because I was working, I was like living yeah, my so life. You were it was just the, over that, a period that, that of time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Did any of the stories. I don't know how you gathered these stories, whether you met them, whether you made them some people send their I, stories. Some, no, no, no. Nobody sent their stories. Everybody mm. I interviewed. Oh. Some people I met face to face and interviewed them face to face. There was a portion I did during the pandemic. So those were all on Zoom. Zoom. Whenever I traveled to a new country, I would make a point of trying to find someone to interview. So, for example, when I went to Sao Tome on holiday which is a Portuguese-speaking country. Yes, I mean, I, I, deserve, <laughs> I deserve all the good things in life, you know. The tour guide was English-speaking, and I said to him, do you know any South Tomian woman who would be willing to speak to me about their sex life? And he introduced me to a friend, and I interviewed her. Mm. So I just took advantage, even if I went to a conference, you know, and maybe yeah. I'll meet somebody from Mali. I'll be like, oh, Mali, when am I going to get an opportunity to interview someone from Mali? I didn't end up interviewing that woman from Mali, unfortunately. Mm. But I was always just looking for people to How interview. many African countries have you been to? A lot. Um, I can't count. I used to work for the African Women's Development Fund. Okay. Oh. So they give grants across the continent, and that's how I did most of Do my Do you have travels. a rough idea of maybe <sighs> generally? I'm just curious. Yeah. You've been to Mali, you've been to Ethiopia, you've been to South Africa, you've been to Kenya, you've been to... I haven't been to Mali, though. Okay. Mali never okay. happened. Egypt? Um, have I been to Egypt? No, I haven't been to Egypt. I've Madagascar? been to Morocco... I've been to Sao Tome. I've been to... I have to think about it in regions. Obviously, yeah. Ivory Coast, Benin, Nigeria, okay. Cote d'Ivoire, Senegal, multiple times. Um, Congo, DRC. Oh, I've wow. been to DRC. Rwanda. I've been to Rwanda. I've been to Tanzania, Zanzibar. Okay. Yeah. Dope. Um, did any of the stories in here turn you on or go like, oh, I wish I was this woman. Yes. When, like, which one? Helen Banda. So, hey. I, I can tell you Helen Banda's story. Is she Ghanaian? <laughs> no, she's... Uh, but but that isn't when... the real name, though. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, that's, that isn't the real name. Some yeah. people use their real names. Oh, not okay. everybody uses their okay. real names. In her case, she didn't use her real mm. name, mainly because of her children, mm. right? But she's Malawian, lives in the States. Mm. What I admired the most about her story is that she and her husband had been in a fairly conventional marriage for 10 years and they decided to open up the marriage hmm. they also have three children including one child who has special needs hmm. and they hmm. will take it in turns to go out on dates to the point where they can have like like she when she was dating a particular guy when his wife was going out of town his wife would like make the guest room and say if you need anything let me know her boyfriend used to come and sleep over at their house and i love the fact wow. that wow yes i love That's the fact brief. i love the fact that they went from a, in a sense, regular marriage to, you know what? We're going to change things and we're going to support each other. And because babysitting is expensive, you know, you hmm. stay home tonight and look at the children while I go on my date. I really like that. Yeah. Trey, is this something that you can afford to do with your partner one day? It depends on my level of emotion. So I tend to think of myself as a very malleable person but if i'm into someone i know that my selfish tendencies of wanting that one-on-one -on -one, and i think the height of my emotion love if you want to describe it as that would want that you know what do you call it a monogamous mm. situation um because i think partly if if i feel like my wife is finding more pleasure in another man 
I wouldn't know how to cope with it. But if it's some chick that we're all just chilling and she tells me some guy's working harder than me, then I'm cool. But me, what I'm curious about with um, your exploration of African women and their sexuality is do you think your research or your interviews were skewed by your own beliefs and activism? I feel like nobody's ever objective in life and yeah. we just need to be honest about that, right? Okay. There's no such thing as objectivity. Um, there will obviously be questions I will ask because I'm a feminist activist mm. and there are obviously stories I want to put out in the world. So for instance, I was very intentional about interviewing mm. trans women. That's a political choice. Mm. I could have done this book mm. and not interviewed a single I was actually trans woman, coming, coming and that would that. have been the political She's choice, a right? Super intelligent. Woman, it's a political it's choice to interview a woman who has a disability about sex because we tend to see people who are disabled as desexualized, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So no, I'm not objective. I don't plan to be objective. I don't want to be objective. There's a better world that I think should exist mm. okay. and I feel like storytelling is one of the ways to bring that world forward because people get to hear from people themselves mm. when you hear from people themselves you see the humanity you see things from yeah. their perspective yeah. is that an, an inherent more. sorry I don't mean to cut you over no, is fine. that an inherent part of why you decided to say African women well because for me my primary audience and target were African women you know I wanted African women to read the book I wanted African women to see their stories reflected in the book. I wanted the world to pay attention to the sexualities of African women. I love the answer to that, but I'm delving a bit even further into the... Because you said prior to the answer you just gave that you there's no objectivity, there's certain stories you wanted to put out there, you were intentional about who you interviewed. And I'm asking if the title African Women was intended to encapsulate the idea that all of these are African. Because the typical African woman, if you were asking me, is a bit on the world stage understated about sexuality. Hmm. And so the identity of I'm doing it, I'm wilding out, is not the general perception, but this is sounds like an inclusive intention behind labeling all of these experiences experiences of African, African women. women yeah. yeah. So a couple of things, right? I feel like so first of all, not every African woman featured in this book is, is in a sense wild and out. It includes the story of a woman who's celibate, right? Yeah. yeah. Um also Oh, and I didn't mean wild and out in a terrible way. No, I didn't <laughs> think you meant it in a terrible yeah. way. I thought you meant it in a sexual way, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And of course, the book also includes stories of women who are wild and out sexually, as they should. Um, also, you know, there are reasons why people don't speak about sex, because there are consequences, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I mean, we live in a country where very soon it may be criminal for all of us to be sitting here having this conversation. We can't pretend these are realities that don't exist, yeah. right? There are certain people with certain jobs who cannot speak about sex because they might lose their job. Yeah. In this country, right? All around the world, yeah. all around the world, uh, yeah. right? So how and why would you speak up about a subject that could get you into trouble? People will judge you, people will look funny at you. You know, it's just that for me, personally, I mean, because of the privilege I have as a middle-class African woman, you know, um, who's not working for a bank or any of yeah, those kind of yeah. institutions, it doesn't bother me. But not a lot of people can choose to make the choices that I have made, um, yeah. So, so sex for you is a subject that is being limited in the public space because of the potential consequences for those who speak up on it. Yes, yes, absolutely. And is that part of your mission to try and liberate people or get people to speak about it more? What, what's the? I mean, I'm not a savior. I'm not trying to liberate anybody. Fundamentally, I'm trying to liberate myself. Okay. You know, I think. Obviously, in the job of liberating yourself, you hope you, you also build community, and maybe some of your stories may be an experience and an inspiration to other people. Um, yeah. Yeah, but see, let me just dumb this down down a little bit. What is it about sex? Mm. Like, I'm trying to understand, right? Sex is a part of 
our lives. It's like eating. Go on. Yeah, we all have sex. Mm -hmm. Without sex, we can't repro reproduce. Without sex, someone might be stressed out. Like, so A lot of why people. can't we openly talk about sex? We can't talk openly about sex because society has decided that sex is something private. I believe that whenever anything is determined to be private, it means there's a lot of power there. And in a way, there are powerful forces trying to prevent you from accessing that power. So they say, don't talk about sex. Don't talk about religion. Don't talk about politics, right? Because when you do, you take up space, you start to question. Mm -hmm. Like when I started to think about sex, I was like, wait, why are we critical of lesbians as Ghanaians when, at least in the boarding school that I went to, it was very normal. Why are we pretending none of us have had sexual relationships with people of the same sex or the same gender? Do you get what I mean? You start yeah, to question yeah. things. And then once you start to question things, you're like, nah, I'm, not, I'm just not going to go along like sheep. Mm. Mm. You know? And that's, that's a huge part of the reason. Marxist feminist will say part of the reason is also because men want to control women's bodies, to control, you know, and to be able to determine that their children are really their children. Yeah. You know, that's what's like a sort of Marxist feminist will say. Wh wh which feminist... Am I? You, yeah, you identify. I can tell you what I would like to be. I would like to be, and I identify more with radical feminists. Radical feminists are basically like, bend the whole system down and let's build it up from scratch. <laughs> <laughs> so we're, we're doing a switch on subjects real quick, but this is something that we have to talk about before it, it escapes us. What do you think about the current state of feminism? Oh, it depends. It's like different in different places. I mean, I identify, like if I was to describe myself, right, I identify as an African feminist, which basically means the issues I am primarily concerned about are those that relate to my people on a pan-African basis, because I'm also a pan-Africanist. So I believe mm. in like African unity and, you know, building community with feminists from different parts of the continent. The, there, is, there is this thing where like people always say, feminists from Africa are so angry really yeah 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 like they are so wild they, they are always ready ready to, ready to attack they are always ready to fight if someone gets something wrong I, i'm sure you have witnessed it okay no people say that about feminists in general okay as cool. opposed to like feminists okay. from africa okay. so, yeah so part of maybe what tombo is getting at i don't know if it's mm -hmm. so correct me if i'm wrong but i don't know if you've heard this before the stereotype I don't necessarily agree about African feminists is that most of the women in feminism who are of African background do not fit the stereotypical images of beauty, the phenotype, that mm. sort of thing. They, they tend to say, I've heard it quite a bit, that they tend to say that those women are typically like what they would describe, quote unquote, I don't agree, as can't be hardcore chick mm. kind of thing. And I don't know how, if you've heard it and how that makes you, um, how, what your thoughts are on, on that perception. I mean, I feel, I feel like people just try to demonize feminists. For some people, feminists are bad Sometimes. and terrible. And, and I think it's just because we are like, bend the system down and let's build from scratch. The system is shit to begin with, right? And so when people try to demonize you, they'll try and say anything that they feel will hurt you. Because of course, part of how society rates women is on external beauty, right? So in beauty, it's really just also manufactured. There are things you can do to- Subjective. To, and it's subjective. And there are also things you can do to look beautiful. So if you're a feminist, for example, and you don't buy into beauty myths and you don't buy into all of the things that society says a woman should do to look beautiful, do your nails, do your hair, somebody will be like, you're not beautiful because you're not fitting what society says beauty is. Do you get what I mean? Mm. And people just try to put feminists down. So they say all sorts of things. Yeah, I've heard these things. But, 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 well, I've had a feminist attack, not me, but my partner before. I've had feminists come at me because I got something wrong. I have been learning along the way. I have changed so much over the years, right? There are some things that I wouldn't get right. 
many things that I would get wrong. But around me were feminists, hardcore feminists. And anytime I got something wrong or I said something wrong, there is no patience to correct me but attack. Mm -hmm. I can give so many examples. I, 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 I choose not to mention names. But so many examples where it has happened to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So in my head, feminists are this. Mutombo, Until you also said I'm a feminist who's been your friend, who has been giving you feedback. You, you are my friend. That is different. You wouldn't, even if you attack me, I know it's coming from a good place. Hmm. I, I'm, I might be wrong, but I know things you, would, you can do and things that you wouldn't do. 100%. When I started going to the United States of America, I was living with a feminist, like well-known feminist hmm. in the States. Some of them create small, but you, you know. know. But this one was... Different from the feminist that I knew. So I'm like, mm, am I meeting the wrong feminist? Or they or or like it's like different from the demographic or region by region. Like what who is a feminist? I, I like are, are they are you guys like sorry, not you guys. Are feminists supposed to be Hardcore, because you said, yeah, you want to burn the system down and rebuild. Like, is that what feminism is about? I mean, there are so many different types of feminists, right? Like, think of the many, many different types of Christians that there are. Mm -hmm. Feminism is an ideology. It's also a practice. It's, mm. you know, a way of being in the world. And in the same way, we have, like, so many different types of human beings, gun people, artists, musicians. There are so many different types of feminists. And also, it depends upon when, at what stage a feminist is when you meet her. When I was 19, mm -hmm. Charlie, like, I would always get into, like, battles with people because I was really? a new feminist. It's like you've become newly queefy. You are mm -hmm. evangelical, you know? <laughs> now, I don't yeah, have time for have time. a lot yeah, of things, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know? So... Um, I want to ask you, because I asked you already what you think the state of feminism is, and I think we answered a bit of that, but one of the th things that, like you said, you go through your evolution when you get into activism, but I'm very curious to hear from you what your opinion is about the current state of feminism as it relates to transgenderism and the fact that womanhood is the uh you know for the proverbial like you know like flags they've stamped on the ground that this is where we're going to make our case and this is the battlefield that we're going to die on in 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 the arbitrary for lack of a better word definition of womanhood as we know it well i don't think first of all there's a word such as transgenderism but what I think is really important are the rights of trans people and any sort of minority group, to be honest. You know, the type of feminism I practice or that I try to practice is really about we need to, in a sense, lift up the most marginalized people. Mm. Me, as a cis woman, you know, I'm not the most marginalized woman that exists. Um, and so I'm really interested in the feminism that is inclusive and that, and that centers the people who, in a sense, have the most struggles. Because actually, if you solve, in a sense, the challenges for people who are struggling the most, you solve everybody's problems, including powerful people, including mm. men. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah. know? Yeah. yeah. So, so if, if, just to push back a bit on, on the idea that solving the small context, Mutombo hits long form mm -hmm. questions, but I, I try to give context to what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. One of the most beautiful human beings I ever dated was a strong and still is one of the strongest feminists I know. And I got into it with her when I was still in my formative years about being open-minded about homosexuality and all of that. We're having a big argument. And she says to me, because she's a lawyer, she says the law is not 
effective or good enough if it doesn't protect the weakest amongst us. And that woke me up in that moment. That was like a transcendent moment for me. I'm like, oh shit, excuse my French. So I was like, okay, I get it. I understand what you're saying. And I hear that in what you're saying. My current challenge with that concept is it alludes to what you said as a cis woman. I'm not very comfortable with that description, but that's a conversation for another day. But as a cis woman, you are not the most marginalized woman. Mm -hmm. When I can make a perfectly lucid argument that feminism itself, the origins of feminism, and what it stood for and what it was trying to fight for is being usurped by the arbitrary definition of womanhood to say that I, as I sit here, in all my privilege as a male, I've grown up a male, I've lived my life as a male, society has afforded me everything that it will afford males, which in feminism is contextualized as privilege, can then turn around tomorrow and say, I'm a woman. But you're not going to do that, right? Because, and people don't do that. Like, people are doing that. But I don't the guy just won a tournament in Florida because he said he was a woman and won the whole... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then when he finished and we had to give him a surprise, he took the money as a man. Like, and he said he was trying to point out a flaw in the law. So that was obviously somebody who's a troublemaker and trying to be a troublemaker. But people don't do that. Like, you don't get... I don't think you get any benefits from identifying don't as you a trans men, woman. Don't you think men... Let, let me just... I want to make this argument with you because I, I, I want to get your perspective. Men, if inherently, some of feminist theory says because of our privilege and because we, of our sense of entitlement, when we are going through society, some men have this weird perception that women have it easy, it's easy, like me, if I'm struggling and I want to call some guy. Some, I'm, I'm, Tom, I'm sure you have, there are women who comfortably call me and say the rent is due or something is short provide financial support, blah, blah, blah. And women. Okay, okay, maybe okay, yeah, not yeah, you, but yeah, yeah, woman, woman, I'm yeah. sure so. You, but you see, <laughs> as guys, maybe Mutombo and I can have a conversation with Charlie, bro, my skin bar me, if you loan me some money, and he will give me the money and I'll have to pay back. But there's no point at which I can call Tombo and be like, yeah, um, Tombo, so life is not going well. Let me give you a feminist perspective on that. Okay. This is when we say patriarchy also affects men. So men should also be interested in dismantling the system, right? Because Patrick says, you have to be a man. Mm -hmm. You have to earn your yeah. own money. You can't have financial difficulties. You can't ask for a, 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 a friend yeah. for help, you know? You can't buy a loan, but with woman, she can take it for free. That's, <laughs> that's the difference. So then why don't you want a system where people can just ask for what they need? And if so people I'm are in a position to support, they support. I, I love that. But what I'm extending the, the conversation to is to say that the same men that we're talking about who are privileged, entitled, recognize a system where they feel is rigged in a certain direction. I don't want to be long-winded. There's a context to why men are providers and women get to... It doesn't happen all the time and everywhere, but women in society are supposed to be taken care of by the man, quote-unquote, mm. in their lives. So they're saying, well, a woman has it easy, so if I just can switch my gender and act as a woman but then people I can. don't do that that's what i'm telling you i'm telling you that people do not do that people do not decide to be trans just because they think women have it easy because actually women don't have it easy all of the statistics around the world show that women don't have it easy so you have to be literally mad to say you're going to do that yeah. right people, so how do you explain people this? only come out as trans because they recognize us who they are and they have no choice but to and a lot of people actually are trans and 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 don't come out as trans because of all of the discrimination that they are going to face. So I think for somebody to come out as trans is actually a really, really bold decision. And from having interviewed... Yes, that is what I think. From having interviewed trans people, it's a struggle not just to end up in the world as themselves, but even when you come out, all of they are more likely to be killed than you know people of other genders. So nobody is going to choose to come out and be a sexual minority in a world that discriminates against them in a world that... So you, you, th you think the upsurge in the... In trans, you know... In, yeah, in, in trans, people, people just... Come, it's just because these people are brave and they're not... Those going into sports, winning all the medals, doing this, 
they, they are not seeing an advantage that they want to take. They, they want to take. I don't think so. I you think know? when people come out as trans, it's because they're trans. Really? Yes. That's like, what I so genuinely you, believe. Okay. So I'm, I'm, I'm loving that I'm talking to a feminist, but I defer to you. I thought, so I'll tell you my transition quickly. I, there was a long period of my life where I identified as a feminist. And then I came to the awakening on my own that I thought I was an uh, imposter because I have never lived life as a woman. And I could not... You don't have to be a woman to be a feminist. But I'll tell you the thought process why I stopped using the word feminist on myself. I am an advocate for women and I support, you know, third wave feminism. Fourth wave, I don't know. But... The reason why I stopped calling myself a feminist was because I think lived experience is vital to identity. And when you say you are a woman, your experiences, the discriminations, the things that have been put on your head, whether you're called gorgeous, beautiful, a whole blah, 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 I will never experience those things. So for me, I said, okay, let me say I can speak up on why women shouldn't be treated as such and so and so, but... Honestly, I'm struggling, and uh, Mutombo says my favorite topic is transgenderism. Yeah. But I struggle with like transgenderism uh, is not a word. Uh, you know what I mean, like I'm, trans I'm not tra- issues. Trans issues. Trans okay, issues. Okay, let's say trans issues for a better conversation. Let's say trans issues. Um, this thing where like a full blown man can wake up and say I identify as a six year old woman. The point, like you're missing the point. They don't wake up and identify. But they are waking up. They're not that waking, is what's happening. No, they're not waking up. You're not trans, no, so wait. you can't say they are waking yeah. up. If you actually speak to trans person, you realize that they always knew they were different. Yeah. They always knew they were different How? from Last when they were a child. We had someone, and you yes. know, was saying she so, is a proper trans person. I'm talking about. Okay. Yeah, but, but, you, but she you said, don't get to identify who's a proper said, trans person and who's yeah, a fake yeah, trans exactly. person. But she said, no, I have to be able to. No, you no. can't. You no, can't. No, 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 listen. So, okay, wait, wait. okay I'm said, listening to you. Pass she, me my palm wine. I think this is the moment where I need more palm wine. Yes. <laughs> she said that from a young age, she always felt different. You can tell, bro. Yeah. Wh- okay. Angel is a special human being. Okay. And I'm, I'm sure people who are truly trans. They, they require the space and the dignity. So you mean there are people, they are scams? Bro, look, <laughs> yeah. I, 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 we have to be able to talk about no. this or yeah. it means that Seriously. I'm being transphobic. You but are, I'm not you, being you transphobic. Are, you are being transphobic. No, no, no. It's okay no, no. to admit to being transphobic. No, no, no. What no let me tell you why it's okay to admit to being transphobic because we live I'm in a world. I'm not transphobic. I think it's there are okay. lunatics in this world. It's okay to admit to being transphobic. We live in a world, right, where uh-huh. a lot of us are socialized to be transphobic, to be, homo- to be homophobic, to be misogynistic, and it's okay. What, we, what is important is we recognize that and we can then work to do better. And it doesn't mean we will get better like So this, this is the it's challenge I have with the position that you're taking. That I am living in the reality that I'm observing people who have lived their whole lives and wake up because now society is more receptive to the idea that you that can... But society is not more receptive. That's the no, no, other no. reality. So no, 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 no. The laws... Is more no, 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 more, let me land not. the point. Please, I want, I want your proper response to it. So, but what I'm saying is, we are living in an age where people... People can bear witness to this. This is not some loony tunes living in just my head. Tombo, people are waking up and identifying as the mm-hmm. opposite sex primarily on the woman's side. It's not happening on the trans man. How many times do you talk about, have you heard of a trans man? In I, this I, social dialogue. I know dialogue. quite a few trans men. Yeah, I know that they exist. I'm not saying they don't exist. But how many times have you seen on any um, social media post, blog, whatever is happening in the world where the subject of focus and concentration are trans men because they are taking away opportunities from actual men. The whole hula baloo is about trans women imposing themselves in spaces that have traditionally been women's spaces and them refusing to acknowledge that there is a problem there. There are some advantages, there are some issues there. So what I'm talking about here is, for me, feminism, as I grew up and understood it, was always advocating for women's rights. But if the very definition of womanhood has become arbitrary then what are you fighting for? I don't think the definition of womanhood has become arbitrary. 
If you can wake up and become a woman, it's a bit I don't think people can wake up and become women. I can. But, but Fred, do you know something? Let what? me let me. So like you 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 sometimes say that like people wake up overnight and you you don't know these people. You don't know Bro, what I just they gave you several examples. The the guy go pl- no, no, but wait, you don't know what has gone on with them in the background. You, you just money? saw it in the news one time that hey, this not guy one is, time, several times. Yes, but you don't know what they have gone through or they are going through for them to come out to I'm say... I'm telling you about the human a- experience. If you tell people <laughs> that they can wake up tomorrow and get a free that meal is, ticket... No, you know what? You know what? Because you always say that people like, you can't just wake up overnight and say you're a woman. But you don't know these people. You don't know the ha- the hardships or the, or the difficulties or what okay. they are going through. Let me tell you when it was difficult to come out as a trans woman. It yeah. was difficult when society was telling you that you had to transition, you had to behave a particular way. Now, all I'm addressing, seriously, I'm not, I don't have anything against people transitioning if they choose to. All I'm addressing is we have reduced this experience to saying that all I have to say, maybe I'm arguing on a very high intellectual level. All I'm saying is if I wake up tomorrow and I say I'm a woman, it has to be acknowledged and accepted that I'm a woman. I think that is a very low bar to set for people to say that they have always identified... Tombo, honestly, mm-hmm. me, you've known me my whole life. If I say I'll be woman tomorrow, and I tell you that, but Tombo, I haven't told you everything about myself, tell me truly, put the mic away, turn the cameras off. You know, go tell... Um, sorry, tell me your name again? This uh, mic. Is it Charlie Fred? They want some easy way out for life inside. Like, that would be your natural reaction. Because you've known me my whole life. You've never seen me act like okay. any type of way that is feminine. When we spoke to Angel, she was expressing a long-lived experience of how she has been through this thing. But Fred, Angel came here to share... Her story. Her story. Yes. Right? Yes. So you know her on a personal tip. Yes. But with this guy you said in Florida... You don't know it's them. Not you just, just saw the news. I'm just yes, saying, I'm You don't know them. Listen, when you ask politicians no, 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 now, no, like, do you get no, me? No, no, what you're saying makes all of the sense in the world. Like, like you don't know these people. No, no. Tombo, what I'm saying uh-huh. to you is politicians, <laughs> when you ask them what is a woman now, are afraid to answer. Maybe you guys are not understanding where I'm coming from. They don't want to define not woman. Not politicians from Ghana, though. They, oh, yeah, like, yeah. Like, I'm yeah. saying that the people who are making the rules who yeah. by and large influence world culture, when mm. you ask them what a woman is, I mm. think it's one of the most clear yeah. answers anybody should be able to give. Yeah. Okay. But, and now it's but, become what, an issue. What, what is your answer if somebody says, what or who is a woman? What would the answer be? It's an adult female. What's an adult female? Female is defined self-explanatory. No, it's adult. not, clearly. So please female explain. Female is. So you just explain, indulge me. The Pretend- chromosomes that align biologically with female. But you, you see, we also know this on a scientific basis that it doesn't really work that way. Mm. Why not? Right? Because supposedly um, a man has XX chromosomes and a woman has XY chromosomes. Yes. And that's not always the case. Some yes. people have different types of chromosomes. It doesn't just, 0. It doesn't just 0. correspond 1%. like that. Yeah. 0.01%. It, it just shows you the diversity in humanity. It's not diversity. What see, is it? No, no, no. No, no, I'm not going to let you get away with this. You have to get back hey. to sex. But oh, when, me, I'm when, happy when, to get when, back when, to sex. Yeah. I'm happy when to people get back make to this any... argument about the diversity in the chromosomal whatever structure, it is absolutely like a, a, a way to divert from the no, real no, no. conversation. You are the one who no, 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 no. You asked me what a I, woman I is, and I said it's people... adult female. Yes, and I said break we are it not down. confused about what and a I, female is. I, no, are I actually. We? No, you and I said to you to break down. And you are saying you're 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 holding on to this idea that. Because 0.01% 0. 0. 0. 0. No. of the population can have a variance in their chromosome. I'm explaining. And you and I, I answered. I said adult female. And, and, and you I said you, you wanted me that. to break it down further. Yes, and you were because, the one who brought up chromosomes. No, you did. No, you, 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 you brought up no, chromosomes. You, because you wanted yeah, you an explanation yeah. of what a female is. Yes. Female, biological definition, Yes. you have to follow the chromosomes for you to be defined as a female. Uh-huh. Now, you took it further by saying that because 0.01% don't fall into... I didn't say 0.01%. No, you, you said no. 0.01%. She said some people yes. don't come out as that. And I gave her the statistical record that is 0.01%. We can't use 0.01% to define what female or male is. That's a fact. So let's talk about the thing properly. All I'm saying is woman, 
man means something. If we are going to say that womanhood is now arbitrary, then let's also admit to the, uh, the farce of it. Because it's a farce. If you say, no, tumble. I mean, I do think womanhood and manhood is a farce because these are socially constructed why? identities. Everything is socially constructed. Exactly. So this is why we can That's also, why you guys want to burn down the system? That's why we can deconstruct because we yeah. are human beings who define what a woman yeah. is. A woman is somebody who looks like me, who does her nails, who has her yeah. hair. Not necessarily. Well, this is part of what society says a woman when, is. You know, femininity is performative. Yeah. Then it's, how can you then stand on feminism? The word itself. Femininity is very different from fem feminism. Feminism how? is a political identity mm. and it's a struggle. Femininity But they all they are all deriving from the root word femme, but female. It's not, it's not the same thing. Yeah, How yeah. is it not the same thing? Because it's not. Because femininity is about, you know, it's about this. Yeah, yeah. A yeah. man can be feminine. It, no. If I say black, blackish, are those two things are inherently different? I don't think blackish is an actual word. It was a title of a show, it's not an actual word. It, it's actually a word now. Because, because words, of the show. No, no, no. Words evolve in society. True, true. They come about because we all assign meaning a, to it. a meaning to it, and mm. then it forms. Child, that you way. know what? Eh? Anytime we are talking about trans, it goes into no, something. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah. Anyway. So, Fred, I want to ask you. Yes. Because there's been so many interviews where I had to chop off. Yeah. Big chunk, like minutes, minutes yes. upon minutes, where you were arguing. Yes. Because I think about, it's a disingenuous no, 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 argument, wait, 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 but go ahead. Especially about trans. Yes. From season one. Yes. So I want to ask you. Yes. What is the issue? My issue <laughs> is that I make don't... It short, make it short, short I'm giving you a very short answer. I don't think gender, especially womanhood, is arbitrary. And it shouldn't be where society says, I or any other man can wake up and say, I'm a woman, and that should be okay. I don't think anybody arbitrarily decides to become a woman. Yeah. I think trans That's why women... I disagree, so we should move on. No, we're not moving on. I'm the guest here. <laughs> I want to have the final word. Trans women, and I have interviewed a number and worked with a number. Yeah. Come out as trans because deep down, they have always known that they were trans. They may not have been able to express it as young people. You know, the world may have identified them differently. And then one day they got to a stage where they were like, I have to be true to who I am. It was never an easy decision. A lot of them still suffer consequences for being who they are and living as themselves. You know, for me, as somebody who is lucky enough, right, that how I was assigned at birth is also how I identify now. Mm -hmm. I recognize that now to be a privilege, you know? And so why should I try? And my womanhood is not so fragile that I am going to be insecure because somebody was identified as a boy when they were young, and now they recognize they're a woman. Mm. Why should my sense of womanhood be so fragile it's to be shaken fragility. by then? Yeah. It's mm. not fragility. Dope. It's well, not. What, what, what do you like? That, why was, are... that was the final <laughs> word. Yeah, final. Let's what? move on. Let's move on. <laughs> let's okay, move on. Okay, let's move on. <laughs> so, um, when we finish, we'll have this conversation, because I, about I really want to talk to her about Feminism, it. right? Yeah. I... Well, I, I don't really know much about feminism. I know what it is. I know people who are feminists, like a million people who are feminists. Um, but quite recently, I heard that it's not a new thing. Of course not. You know, it, it's, it's really n n not a new thing. And I, and I want to ask you this, because I know that you are a history, you are, you are so, you know, etched into, you know, history too. So I, so I want to ask you, how far does feminism go? I think feminism goes back to acts of resistance, right? So a lot of things that African feminists we do is we claim as our African feminist ancestors, some people who may have never heard the term, may have never heard the word, may not, like, oh, I'm sure that's, finished. yes, it is Sorry. finished. We're talking about the palm wine for people who are wondering, <laughs> you know, for example, I think of someone like Yasan to as a feminist ancestor. Absolutely. Mm. You know? Because she was like, I'm not going to allow these British colonialists. Isn't Yas and Tua's story, uh, isn't it fiction? No. no. Oh, bro. It's not Come fiction. On now. How it's is not it fiction? fiction? Because I, 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 I really, like back then, where women were sidelined for a woman. No, 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 That is other people's wait, culture. Wait, wait, exactly. Not our culture. Yes. No, wait, can I finish? I didn't listen. When we women listen. were sidelined, mm -hmm. back then, like, it, it, it wasn't. It's, it's not like now where you know women are also in the forefront. Women were basically sidelined for a woman to come out and go like, "You men, 
Ah. You are all cowards. You are all weak. I, the woman, I'm going to lead and fight these people. I think it's hard to believe. You don't Why know is our that history, hard to believe? Then? then you don't know our history. Yes, that's Bro, true. Read our history. Because you know what? Let me tell like, you. We were way more egalitarian absolutely than white people were yeah, 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 yeah. in fact the reason why we have gone backwards and today we are backwards yeah is because of the victorian ideals white people brought with them mm-hmm. where they were like women have to be a particular way mm. men have to be a particular way mm. you know our systems they, i won't say they were like fair or equal but they were they had a lot more openness there was a lot more space than, than we have even today. I'm surprised you, you don't know. believe this Yasanto story, though. No, I, I'm, I'm not saying I don't believe, but I have this. But the queen, thought. the queen mothers existed, and they predate uh, European. But the queen mothers were not fighting wars; they were not going onto the battlefield. But also look at it from a panel. Like you wouldn't find women on battlefields. Yasantua basically, ha- there is this picture with her with a gun. Yeah, but it was a political stance and it was also a, 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 a very and, unique and, time. And, 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 and also, I, I find it hard also, to, believe, also to look be at, honest. Also look at it from a Pan-African perspective, right? Because me, I'm interested in like history across the African continent. Think of Queen Nzinga of Angola. I who love fought her. the Portuguese. Mm. Think of the Dahomeyan woman warriors. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, you yeah. know, like we actually have that in our history. Um, hmm. Europeans didn't have that in There's their history. There's even this like queen, the I'm, I'm, I don't want to mispronounce her name, but it starts with an N. She's from the... Um, I'm sure it's Queen Nzinga of Angola that you're talking no, about. No, Nzinga I love because okay. I've done a whole t-shirt with her. Mm. But uh, there's the, you know, the, the part of the Egyptians that starts with a K. I can't Are you remember. thinking of Nefertiti? No, no Nefertiti. Nefertiti was, was what, so fine. It was, was just fine. What's the K? Uh, the, the Kushites. Okay, okay, okay. This was a Kush queen who conquered mm-hmm. um, Alexander. Mm. Mm. Uh, the great Alexander who came from Rome and all mm-hmm. of that. We have a history of women warriors. In our, mm. in our history, the, the thing that I think we're confused about, honestly, is identity. I, I think Yas Santua is a might legend. have, wait, might have instigated or might have urged men on. No, wait, you know wait, this wait, is no, recorded. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah. wait. Might have urged men on. Ah, you guys, what are you doing? No. Won't you go and wait? Won't yeah, you go I'm, and fight? Won't you go and do this? Like, why? Like, you are all weaklings. You are that, all, that's what I'm trying to that's, answer you. You know, there was she, an assembly. Yeah, that she might have done, but leading men on, on no, the no, no. battlefield, why I you, think why it's you, a reach. Why do you find that hard to believe? I'm surprised you find that yeah, hard to believe. It, it, you a, know, she a, stood up a, to a, speak a, a amongst, like, like, there was a meeting. That between. is so easy to do for a woman. Hey! Easy. That's that's that, that is. But Fred, a woman leading a battalion. Come on. No, no, no. I'm not talking come about the on. battalion part. I'm talking about the fact that. That's what they are saying. Yes, Antoine did. But she why, led the why charge. Why do you find that hard to believe? I don't understand why you find that hard Yo. to believe. Because this is also, I believe, like very well documented historically. Yeah. Really? So, is it? Yeah. yeah, yeah so yeah. what evidence where, do you have against like, it? Where go to, it, we go didn't to write the, about go it. To the the British wrote about it. Yes, they have the no reason library. to lie on our behalf. Go to the Baum Library. <laughs> do, you, do you believe them, though? <laughs> I, I believe that they are better documenters of our own history than we are of our Sadly. own. Sadly. Because our history was oral, mm. mainly. So. Yeah. Yeah. Now, yeah. I, um, I also heard that back then, our women were also marrying multiple. Is that true? I didn't know about that. But let me tell you what I suspect slash mm-hmm. hope, right? Obviously... Slash hope. Slash hope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> why? Why do you? She won't marry multiple. I'll tell, I'll, tell you, I'll, yeah. tell you, I'll tell you why. I hope that. I mean, because we know that our societies, at least in Ghana, have been mainly polygamous, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. My great-grandfather had seven wives. Mm. He was queer. So he bought each of them a shop, and they yes. lived in different towns. Yes. And so maybe he spends one month here and mm-hmm. goes here. By the time he comes back to the first wife, it's been seven months. Mm-hmm. I'd like to think she wasn't just sitting there with her legs crossed, Mm-hmm. Waiting for her husband to come back to service. Exactly, there. exactly. Wow. Yeah, but so even I'll tell you a, 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 a truer <laughs> cheating. Something that's based in fact. Mm-hmm. The Ghana people, because I'm partly Ghana. I'm, I'm very invested in researching our history, and there's a book that was written by a British spy, um, titled "The Lives and Ways, the Life and Religions of the Ghana People," and he wrote all these books, right? But in Ghana culture, yeah. when men got married, the wife typically stayed with the mother. 
and the men also had their mm, own quarters, yes, yes. right? And the marriage was not necessarily what we perceive as modern marriage yes. where they're living in the same house. Where the, the, the best part about when I read this was that you are with your wife. She's with her mother. You go to try, and this speaks to the sex, the sex mm, lives of mm, African women. Mm. You go to your mother-in-law to look for your wife. Mm. And she'll tell you she's not available to come home with you today. And the true underlying meaning was that the mothers and the women understood that they were having extracurricular lives, activities, sexual partners. So you, the husband, that you come. Actually, part of the tradition was that it was highly disrespectful for you, Mutombo, to say to your mother-in-law, you are lying. Where is she? Let me find it. Mm -hmm. the, what the mother-in-law says, what the mother-in-law says basically goes, and you're supposed to return to your quarters, and wherever your wife was, whatever she was doing, was literally none of your business. So mm -hmm. this idea that, I, I, I agree with her. If you're servicing, you have seven different wives. We were maybe more uh, liberal with our sex lives than is being portrayed to us today, and you can see why we're living in hypocrisy mm -hmm. and people are suffering because... Mm -hmm. Most of the men who are trying to ban gay sex and all of these things, they are having duplicitous lives. They are l l l sleeping with side chicks. They have multiple homes, multiple. But it's not according to the Christian doctrine. Because what we came to meet, my grandfather, I'm not far, we're not far removed though. My father was, had five wives, my mm -hmm. father, mm -hmm. with, had seven children with five different women. And my sister just told me an experience. She had, she come home one day, my dad, was at home two women came to fight in the house that hey, hey by the time we woke up in the morning two of the women were emerging from my dad's bedroom gangster shout out to poppy by the way that's a g <laughs> but this was the understanding that maybe he came like what are you people fighting for the thing that you are looking for have enough let's relax there's no need to beef so what we come from is entirely different from what western culture has sold us and is really like making us struggle with um, you know yeah not do you do you think that men, and I'm saying men because I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a man, do you think men are cheating so much now because they don't have the freedom to date or to be with, you know, the multiple partners like our fathers and grandfathers? I don't think just men are cheating. I think women yeah, are yeah, cheating I, I mean, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, you know... This is just my personal belief. I don't feel like monogamy is a natural state of being for us oh, as human oh, beings. Oh. Yeah. So you, I think... You, you think human beings are not wired to be I monogamous? I think the majority. I think a lot of human beings are not wired to be monogamous. And I feel like people should be free to create the kind of relationship structures that work for them. I'm sure for some people, monogamy works. Those people should be in monogamous relationships. For some people, polygamy works. They should be in polygamous relationships. For some people, poly so polyamory works. Things. They should be in polyamorous <laughs> relationships. Yeah, some people this. should be single and celibate. They should be single and yeah. celibate. Yeah. There should be room for people to find their level and to be at their level. And I there think that's be room the for people to change their mind. Yeah, that's true. Somebody that's the true definition of liberalism. And then, you know, realize yeah. that, you know, monogamy is no longer for me. It used to be for me. What I don't like is the dishonesty because I think it's very, very dangerous. That's more hurtful. As a dishonesty. There should be mm. openness. There should be honesty. There should be communication. But someone would lie to their partners because it's hard to find people around who would agree to such a thing. I don't Human think so. Beings are people assume selfish. that. They don't give their partners the benefit of the conversation. You know, because they just assume their partner would not be in favor. Have you had the conversation? Mm. If you've had a conversation, your partner okay. is not in favor, cool. So, Nana, maybe you can give us guidance on this because you've done the work and you've invested your life in this. But I think, in my own personal experiences, Ghanaian women specifically are not very open to honesty. Yeah, so exactly. I, I talked to a girl, um, Some this is a different time, not currently. But when I came into her life, she came into my life. It was like, for me, it was purely physical. And I was like, yeah, what's up? And then she started telling me stuff like, I don't feel loved. She wants me to put in the work of somebody who is romantically interested. And I said, listen, this is what I'm about. When you need me, I'll show up. You need a painter to paint your house, I'll send a painter. You need some money, if I have it, I'll send it to you. But 
when I need you is purely physical. And when that's you done... Mean sex? Yes. Mm. And when yeah, that's so just done... Say sex. Sex. Don't, like, don't yeah. F- I mean... Why shouldn't he say physical? Uh, but What's just the be real. Uh, no, we have, we have someone here who's written the <laughs> sex pure, lives Yeah, it's purely African because has, I want talking to have sex. Cyphers. And I wanted you to come over for that. Yeah. But because... This is my suspicion. Maybe I'm doing too much thinking for people around me. But my suspicion is that she has been wired so strongly to believe that having sex in exchange for whatever she needs from me is so horrible and terrible that she has to go along with this idea that she wants love from me. And she's like, oh, I'm hollow. I'm heartless. It's making, it, it had made things so complicated. I stopped calling. I'm like, ah, madam, this thing is too long. Because I've told you up front, this is, this, this is where I'm at. And this is what I'm willing to do. I'm not policing your life. I'm not calling you to ask you where you are. But then when it's time for her to come over, she would have said to me, oh, you're not showing love uh, to me. Why don't you drive to come and pick me up? Meanwhile, you live somewhere so far. And I'm like, if you take an Uber, I will pay for the Uber. So these arrangements, and maybe I'm going to the wrong circles, but I feel like what you're saying is hampering a lot of honesty in men coming out to say what they actually want. Because I believe that most men that I've interacted with intimately, that are my boys, that are married. I'm not married. I've never been married. Mm-hmm. Well, actually, yeah, I have, but that's for different purposes. But <laughs> that are married are always interested in doing things outside of their marriage. But because they believe and the women give off the vibe that they will not be receptive to that openness. Mm-hmm. Now it becomes what you're saying. They will lie to their wives and then they'll go and do what they need to do. Yeah, but for so me... So what will change that for us? No, but Anna? for me, before um, she, she steps, even from way back, I realized from, from Jump that many women hate to hear the truth. If you approach a woman, go out with her once, twice, and go like, yo, guy, you know what? I'm about the sex. Mm-hmm. Trust me, you most lose. of them will. Yeah, you yeah, yeah, yeah. But you guys, you, know, you, you have to lure, like yeah, find yeah. your way around, and then that's but, what they, what they what they like. But I like to say this for the young men. I want Anna to answer my question, but for yeah. the young men who listen to us, I have become a pro at f- bro. I've lost Finessing. no, no, no. <laughs> I've lost so much. I have lost so much. Like women that I was super attracted to being in my room, and I know the truth will lose me the action, but I spit it anyway. Good. Because I Good. don't want the option yes. where she would tell me that... He eh, deceived me. He deceived me. Yeah. So I would... This girl was in my room. She comes to visit me at 1 in the morning. She says she's coming over. He come. He did sleep my bed inside. And then in the middle of making out, she pauses and asks me dead in the middle you of the me. dark. What so where is this going? I'm like, <laughs> to sex. What the hell are you talking about? So I had to turn over and sleep dry. She also slept dry in the morning. I gave her her Uber money and everybody <laughs> went their way. But I deleted her number immediately. I'm like, well, what kind of stress is this? Yeah. You know, and I drew, you know what's going on. Yeah. What's up? Like, why would you do that? Yeah. So I don't know. Nana. Nana, tell us, what are we doing wrong? Please, maybe oh, we think God. we know more than we, sh- we do. I think you should have a lot of empathy for these women, right? Because actually, society views women who choose to have sex just for the joy of it in really negative ways. They call them sluts, they call them hoes, they call them bitches. Mm. They're real life consequences for women when they choose to be sexually expressive. On the other hand, a guy who is out there sowing his wild oats, there's even an expression, Mm. he's sowing his wild oats. Men are allowed to be sexually free. Women are not. There are consequences. Mm. And so, of course, these women need to have like justification. They need to feel they're doing it for a higher purpose because a man loves it, because it's a romantic relationship. So have a lot of sympathy for those women. And at the same time, recognize that there are a lot of women like myself, you know, who have worked hard to liberate themselves. So um, with a book where- Bro, um, show it to the camera. Let them see what it looks like so they I, can go this, and show support. This, this book there, you see so, so many cameras. It, uh, so with the sex lives of Afghan women, this is my pe- personal take on this. It's an easy read. I, I, am I like it when, it when I can imagine things from a book? Erotica. 
Yeah, you know, yeah, I'll come to that. Look, I'll tell you my first experience with, with uh, erotic. Did I tell you? Have yeah. I told you? Yeah. Um, two stories stuck with me. I'm, I'm not done yet. I, uh, I'm left with like two, two stories or three stories to, to you know, finish. The, the, the man who had like multiple wives and, you know, you know, had a big house, you know. Um, yes, it's was, newer story. Yeah. And the other, the couple who were going to sex clubs, you know. Yes, Helen Bender story. Yeah. Those two stories. The yes. allergy, is it, is it an allergy? No, you're thinking of Alaji Banda. No. The, the name of the girl was Helen no. Banda. No, yeah, but, but the man yeah, who... Yeah, I'm thinking but, of Nura. She yeah. was the woman from Kenya who went to Senegal to be the third wife Yeah, of it's Ben. It's so easy and it sticks, right? You can make up pictures in your mm. head as you read. Mm. Masterpiece. I'm not saying this because I, I, I know you, but... Thank you. But, but it, it's, it's a masterpiece that, like, the, the language is so easy. You don't have mm. to pick a dictionary every now and then. Like, I, I, I hate books like that mm. like where you have to pick dictionaries and check out a word and all that um is 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 this the first and last or is there going to be a a second part of the sex lives of Afghan because I'm sure you have gathered or you right now with this book you can f you you can find it you can find people easy like easily to speak with should we expect another book on the sex lives of maybe men <laughs> So a number of people have asked me, am I going to write the sex lives of African men? And the answer is no, mm -hmm. because I think you guys can write your own book, right? And I really believe people should write from their own experiences. So no, there won't be the sex lives of African men. And there isn't only also going to be a volume two of this book, right? Um, I'm working on my second book, which is also still exploring the subjects of sex and sexualities. But what I'm now looking at is a lot of... Uh, indigenous practices when it comes to sex and sexualities, how we have transferred knowledge about sex and sexualities, how we ourselves have practiced the art mm. of erotica, yeah. you know, um, how we have taught young girls about sex. I'm interested yeah. in looking at our age old practices and how we can make them relevant for today. Yeah. I, I think I, I think sex our uh, sex lives depreciates though. Because talking about eroticas, right? The first time I came was in SS1, and it wasn't through sex. It was through masturbation, mm -hmm. and I discovered... Masturbation is a form of sex. Yeah, yeah, okay, but it wasn't through penetrative yeah. sex, yeah. And because I had sex years after secondary school, it was through, you know, mas masturbating. And I feel that the feeling when I was coming then is different from... The feeling when I'm coming now, first time, like mm. it's no, not 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 first time, like that period, because I was masturbating for years upon years upon years. I think my mom caught me once. <laughs> yeah, you told me. Yeah, I, I think my mom caught caught me once, and um, because like, how did she react? I we we never spoke about it. Okay, she, did she like just turn around and leave the room or like? Yeah, I, I was doing it in in the to toilet. I okay. was doing it in the toilet most of the time. Um, but back then when 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 I was coming, it was like you know it came with it. Oh, 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 you know <laughs> it came with the sound. Yeah, but now I can be on my phone and come in and it's just normal. Like you know, do you think sex depreciates in quotes? Of what time? Me. And, 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 and <laughs> hmm. <laughs> well, first of all, I have to say I admire your skill to come quietly while you're on the phone. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think sex depreciates with time. It does. No, maybe the coming is different. Okay, everybody's experience is different. For me, I think I feel more confident in my sexuality now, now. Oh, wow. as a 45-year-old woman than I did as a teenager. And I think the quality of my orgasms is better. And I also think I know myself more. And I really hope that will continue to be the case for a really, really long time. You know, because I think the other thing we do wrong is we desexualize older people, especially older women. Hmm. But, some, but some of us have, have game, Charlie. In mm. what way? Tell me more. Oh, Charlie. <laughs> we have... Kappa, <laughs> Kappa, Kappa <Duna. laughs> yeah, yeah, you're yeah so I don't think you know we should, and I feel like that's an anxiety people have. Oh, I'm getting mm. older, I'm not going to be as attractive, yeah. 
And I don't think we should worry about those things, right? Yeah, I think yeah. sex can get better with age because we get more confident. We know our bodies better, you know? All the things that society tells us you can do, you realize maybe fuck society mm. and let me do what I want to do and enjoy. Yeah. Quick question. I Was there a thought process behind the book cover, Orange and Green? Yes, there was. There was. So um, my this is the UK had cover. I actually have three covers, you know. Okay. Um, so the cover got changed from the paperback. Um, there was an artist called Luke Cage who designed these covers. Mm. Um, I remember, like, my publisher... Luke Cage? Luke Cage. Okay. I'm sure his name was Luke Cage. I hope he's mentioned somewhere in the acknowledgement. There's a show also, Luke Cage. Yes, I remember that okay. show. Um, I remember my publisher, Charmaine Love, group advocating for this because she said it will stand out on the bookshelf. Okay. You know... One of the options was a sort of pale, um, almost cream color. And I, and funny enough, my agents both preferred that cover. And she was like, okay, I hear you, but let me tell you why I like this cover. And because she's a publisher and knows how to sell books, I'm like, okay, let's mm. go for it. And she wanted it to be bold. She wanted the title to be bold. She wanted my name yeah, to be bold. It's so, it's so, so on point. Like that, so was, point. That, was, um, that was like her recommendation and we went for it. Okay. So um, final um, question maybe. Um, there is a paragraph that I'm going to read and that will lead to my question. For many of the women that I interviewed, their conversation with me was the first time they had ever shared deeply personal stories with anyone else. And some described our conversation as therapeutic, a healing that benefited them. And hope that you, the reader, did as well. Do you think we should talk about sex more. I know we should talk about sex more and how can people come out of their, of their shells to, to you know, talk about sex more? I absolutely think we should talk about sex more to the extent that the working title for my second book and Fred and I were talking, talking about this earlier, you weren't here, is we need to talk about sex, even mm, though I don't no think well. that's the title we're going to end mm. up with. Because I think it's an extremely political subject a lot of us grew up grew up not being told anything about sex, or really very little, or we're told don't do it, right? We just had a sense that sex was this really bad thing. And then somehow you get to a certain age, and then you're expected to like have sex, get married, yeah. produce yeah, yeah. children. But nobody's speaking to you about pleasure. Nobody's speaking to you about your body. Nobody's speaking to you about anything, really. Yeah. Um, how to manage your body, how to control pregnancy, None of these yeah. things, right? And I think it's extremely important for us to talk about sex. Yeah, so basically sex isn't just casual sex. It's it's like all around, like menstrual cycle, Absolutely. you know, mm -hmm. and, and all that. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. And I think sex yeah. is also very intricately linked to the essence of who we are, our identity, what we stand for. Um, psychology will tell you that. But sometimes... So I straddle the line between, I'm a, I've always felt like I was a liberal. Now liberal is moving towards something else that I don't quite identify with yet. So I'm very careful in saying the word I, uh, liberal. But what I wanted to like, contribute to what you guys have said so far is that the last question. Sex is vital. I think it's good. I, when you were asking her how did she find it so easy to talk about sex yeah. from a young age and whatnot, I share that identity with you because I was free talking about sex. I don't know if you remember, but in Martin De Bruyne, that's mm. one of the things that people thought I was extreme because I was listening. Mm. And I, I wasn't joking when I said Shabarangs and Patra. Mm. I was talk, listening to Shabarangs, Patra. They were very open about yeah, sex. Yeah. So most of my conversations with girls at, back then was wild stuff. I was just talking about anything and everything that came to mind. And I've always been comfortable talking about sex. But what I realized that it did for me personally, I'm not saying that it's a prescription for everybody else. Yeah is that when I look at what became of my friends and myself in how we treat sex, I realized that because sex was held as so sacred and so private and whatnot, that it started leading my friends to doing the craziest, wildest things just to get a bit of that high. And for me, what liberalism, being able to talk about sex freely, talking to girls about sex, it led me to was actually being able to 
restrain myself, control myself to a point where I didn't see women anymore as just sex objects. Like there were people that I dealt with on my own level, their own intellectual capacity. And so I didn't have to be taught consent. I yeah. realized it from a very early age that as much as I want it, the other person has to want it too. And I don't get into these things. So talking about sex is very vital. I think it's important for us to talk about it as a society and for us to remove the shame. Unfortunately, women wear the brunt of it the most. That is something that I detest. And that's why I always make it a point to say openly every time I get that I don't care about a woman's past because it's none of my business. Because if I were to talk about my past, I don't think if we're using the same standard, any woman should want me. But I don't think I'm damaged goods because of it. So mm -hmm. sex is something that you live, learn through, and then you, you find a way to share it with people that you feel are worth it. Yeah. Uh, and we should have... a. A, a world where it allows people to be more free and open about it instead of having to hide in some corner to do it and, you know, make yeah. it like, you know, dope, such a... Dope, dope, Yeah. So what's up? It's been a dope conversation. Uh -huh. It's been really nice being yeah. here in the studio and the beautiful studio yeah, and, and the beautiful backdrop. And, and we know how busy you are and... Never too busy for you, baby. Ah, jeez. Thank you. He's too busy. <laughs> um, so friend, the way I'm holding the mic is not good. So, so guys, another choir, we thank you for coming through. We might call you again sometime in the future. But um, guys, we want you to share this podcast. We want you to leave a review wherever you you listen to your podcast. And our YouTube channel is chai full fledged, like full force, full videos up there. Subscribe and share. Thank you for listening to the if more. Let's Divide podcast. We are out. Yes, sir. Now...